Today, I am well dressed. What is the special occasion, you ask? The special occasion is Star Wars Jedi Survivor Gameplay Lightsaber Combat Showcase IGN First. Still don't get it? You will soon. And right now, Cal is opening a rusty, dusty machine. That, that's, that's an unnecessary rhyme. But anyways, let's get into it. But hold on, what the hell is he uh, holding? This is not his lightsaber. This is a machine and I don't know what this is. But anyways. Mm -hmm. Who is this guy? I mean, he, he looks like from the High Republic era, but I don't know who he is. Okay. Alright. All the action and scout trooper dismemberment. Oh my, whoa, 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 whoa. what the hell? I think I need to change my joke. Because last time I said the human dismemberment is forbidden by Disney. It, it, it would seem that Disney actually backed off for a bit. Because... Holy shit, this guy's legs is, leg is cut off. Oh my. And, and this was... Hold on. So, you can enjoy all the action and scout trooper dismemberment. Wow. That was dynamic. That was... Hold on. This is dynamic, isn't it? It has to be dynamic. It, it can't be uh... yup this is dynamic what I mean by that is so there are two types of dismemberment one is that you just have it in uh, scripted uh, scripted sequences where uh, like finishers or something uh, where the uh, where there is like specific type of dismemberment you can do but this is dynamic dismemberment, which is like uh, when an uh, enemy's health is low enough, like the way your uh, weapon moves, according to that dismemberment happens, obviously, and based on my tone, you can probably guess which one I like better, right? Um, uh, main thing though, um, I, I, I thought that even if they were going to have dynamic dismemberment, uh, they were going to have it for non-human enemies and, and not for human enemies. But um, I guess uh, I guess they thought they had my thought process where they were like, you know, these guys are wearing armor and all these things, and the lightsaber cauterizes the wound. Are they really human though? I mean, they are not to dehumanize them. God damn, if I dehumanize a stormtrooper, but like the point is. <clears throat> Someone playing it could very easily pretend that, yeah, these are just robots. Okay, I, I, I uh, rest my case. We shall go forward. Okay, then. With, with what? Why are you mumbling? Oh, I see. Of course, well, my voice will be accompanying it, so you can thank me for that later. This is a test environment, not a level pulled from the actual game, mm -hmm. and a showcase okay, of just of four of the five stances. Well, I mean, I guess if they are going to release similar DLC as they did last time, where they release the combat arenas, that is like essentially a test environment, isn't it? Where you make your own combat scenario and do just apeshit crazy things. Yeah, so anyways. With all that said, enjoy and keep it here on IGN for mm. more Star Wars Jedi Survivor sure. all throughout February. Okay, here he is. Oh, God. Oh, okay. That didn't dismember. Well, we are getting there. We are getting there, I guess. Oh, God. Okay, this was the... This was the uh, BX uh, secure the 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 KX security droid uh, thing, but this was the, the the droid was BX battle droid, but he did the BX battle droid cut. Okay, okay then, sure. So so lightsaber throw into a dismemberment and another one was okay. This is fine. This is the scripted one. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> pull and dismember. Oh God. Can we do that to scout troopers? I guess not. I guess we can cut off only their limbs. 
Okay. I wanted to see dismember these guys. Because these are humans, I guess. Dismember, come on. Oh, come on. Don't be a, uh, a coward person. Come on, dismember. Okay, didn't happen. Okay. Well, clearly there are there are cuts on his legs. This isn't dismember. Uh, well, let's not let's reserve judgment. Let's not pass judgment yet. Okay. God damn. Of course he bleeds. He's human. What do you think? Okay. That. Oh my. Oh my. What was that? That was a. That was a uh, like a like a rising jump move. With, this is going to be very useful because it used to be that to do this shock wave, you had to jump physically and then do the shock wave. The problem was like uh, that could sometimes leave you open to attacks. Um, but in this case, you are you are doing a jumping attack. So that will actually, I think, increase the way that increase the number of times and increase the ways in which you can use uh, or utilize this uh, shockwave move. Okay, then that that is going to change gameplay drastically. Cool. Now I see the dismemberment. So can we only dismember scout troopers, not the other human enemies? Come on. Oh God. Oh god, that was brutal. What did he do? Yeah, he just sliced his head off. I mean, I mean, not really in the game, but you know. Mm -hmm. Come on. I want to see more dismemberment. I want to see limbs flying. Also, why is he... Uh constantly uh why is he constantly okay i was gonna say why is he constantly in the double saber mode and then he switched to single saber see this is why you don't uh this is why you do don't say it quickly this is why you wait before you say anything but you know what i'm a react youtuber what can i oh god damn it what was that that was brutal I mean, that is not even a lightsaber throw, that is a lightsaber kamikaze. Oh, and we have our uh, dark troopers, uh, not the dark troopers, what, what, what are these guys called? Oh my god. These are called dark troopers, right? I get confused always. These are not dark troopers, hold on. Dark troopers are the droids. Purge trooper. Yes, I'm sorry, I got confused. Like, I mean, you can see, right? They were in dark armor. And like dark trooper, purge trooper. But yeah, these are purge troopers. This is the... Um, this is the, I think, uh, Electro Staff Purse Trooper. And uh, Scal is clearly stabbed in a very uncomfortable manner. Uh, in a very unfortunate place, if if you, you would know if you were a man. And it's coming out from a very unfortunate place as well. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> this is, this is, this is bad. This is not gonna get monetized, is it? Anyways, let's continue. And also, <laughs> hold on. This shape is very unfortunate. I will just say, I will just put it there. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so purse troopers are back, scout troopers are back. That's good. Oh my, that was a, okay, that is, that is a new move. Cool. So that was a, uh, that was a push move. That was a kick move, like not, not like much like the, uh, dodge kick that you could do earlier. So did he did he dodge into this? Let me see. Oh no, he didn't. He, there was a space after the dodge. So this is something you can do anyway. So like earlier, it used to be that you had to dodge into that thing. So that could create some issues. But okay then. So this could this could help in crowd control. Like uh, if if you are like um too close uh, with enemies lightsaber attacks are not very good at pushing enemies so hmm this this is they are adding, adding a lot of new things like these two things alone by these two i mean the 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 uh, the rising uh, the rising move the jump jump attack 
and uh, this one uh, the kick mm -hmm. the the combat is much more uh, refined in this one like this 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 does not look like you are mowing down a person this looks like oh, sorry mowing down a npc this looks like a fight between two uh, veteran combat uh, combat experts like look at this like yeah the uh, purge troopers were always a little difficult but like it could still feel like like uh, like you're just mowing down an enemy this like feels like oh my a new finisher uh-huh uh-huh very cool oh my <laughs> okay straight up beheading cool i guess it's okay as long as it's not a human enemy him non-human enemies don't have heads that's just something that looks like a head <laughs> sure Jan. anyways um now that that's over with holy shit there's a lot to speak but i think there is a lightsaber stances video that they released and let's go over that as well it's a little longer uh, i think we can squeeze that in as well um i guess i won't be looking at comments i have to go somewhere uh because i gave my opinion but it's good to know the truth i don't think mm -hmm. anyone would argue the idea that a jedi makes for a pretty badass playable video game protagonist of course not they've got a lightsaber well a sith would make for a uh, more badass uh, protagonist but then uh, like with Sith, you have to do other things which you don't want to do. So, you know, like you're an evil guy. So, of course. Force powers, they're quick, and they can mm -hmm. jump really high. Of All course. Great and they have a grappling hook. Game, Hold on. Quick, and they can So, this was a predetermined really grapple high. point. But see, he, he grapples, and this point still remains. So, like, what is this then? Is this like some sort of uh, knob or some sort of valve that he's grappling onto? Like this doesn't look like a part of the foliage. So this looks man-made or, or, or this looks like artificial, not man-made. I shouldn't say that because Star Wars, right? This looks artificial. And I get that like this is uh, like over here, but like uh, I think it would have been much more believable. Uh, if these grapple points were something natural because like like be because if it's artificial it means someone set it up perfectly so that someone could grapple onto it that like uh doesn't sound great like if it's natural if it's something natural you could just say yeah like cal is finding like whatever uh whatever he, he can grapple onto uh anyways um Moving on. Eight attributes for an action game, but one challenge about having a Jedi main. It's a small, it's a small criticism. Okay, it's just, but it is a criticism I have. So, anyways, Character moving on. It, I think I will forget about it when really I play the game. To use lightsabers. Uh -huh. That presents a bit of an issue as most good action game heroes mm. have multiple weapons to help keep combat fresh over the okay. course of the game. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order found mm -hmm. a solution to this problem by giving Cal two different lightsaber stances, mm -hmm. each with their own combat focus and moveset, mm. and with the sequel Jedi Survivor, Respawn is looking to up the ante with a total yep. of five different stances five. that Cal can use over the course of his journey. To find out- I, Are there anything to do with lightsaber, uh, the lightsaber forms? Uh, more Let's about see. each of these stances, I talked with Senior Design Director Jason DeHarris and Game Director Sig Asmussen, mm -hmm. who walked me through the design philosophy behind each stance and their unique approaches to combat. This is Kobo as well, right? So I think you have at least three stances unlocked from the beginning. Because Kobo is a, Kobo is a very early planet. So that's great. And I guess you will have all of your upgrades from the beginning. And you will have this thing. Pretty, pretty brave respawn. Mitchell, Mich his name is Mitchell Saltzman. That is a very fortunate name and I love it. <laughs> what were you expecting me to say? One of the big focuses throughout the development of Jedi Survivor mm -hmm. has been this concept of Jedi 2.0. And how to take Cal from where he was in Jedi Fallen Order, a young and relatively inexperienced Padawan trying to find his place and identity, mm -hmm. to where he is now in Jedi Survivor. 
a much more confident and capable Jedi Knight who is also five years wiser. Okay. As Moosin said that the team wanted this change reflected in Cal, not just in the story, mm -hmm. but through his combat as well. As cool. a result, Cal is a much more capable fighter right from the start in Jedi Survivor. Of course. With three saber stances available uh -huh. right from the beginning See, of the game. See, I, I predicted it correctly. Okay, then. Single blade, double, double bladed, blade, and dual blade. Double bladed. We felt like it was important to give the player a greater arsenal right off the bat. Mm -hmm. We had two fully realized stances in the first game. Well, to be to be fair, you did have three stances. The third stance just wasn't like realized completely. Like you had to do, like you could only do it for special moves, and uh, like that com consumed force meter, so that wasn't great. And uh, that was the single, and that was the staff, and we had a stance where you had a twin blade. Oh, so which again. was something that we wanted to fully realize in the first game. But, but of we course, never, we basically ran out of time. Yeah, and ended up becoming. I'm a happy. Special move. I'm happy they didn't waste time on it and did the did the game as they will, as they did, and I'm happy that they added it as a special move because it's like it's the best of both worlds in a way because you know you don't want to go around um, like wasting time on something which uh, you know the game could do without. Like yeah, it, it would be a good cherry on top, but like the cake can cake is still good without the cherry on top. But uh, like if in the in the process of adding the cherry on top, you make the cake bad, no one is gonna eat it. So, yeah, I'm happy they did what they did. Move. It was a really cool moment, but it was, uh, you know, mm -hmm. not given the same amount of uh, focus and uh, This guy is a fan. This, so, guy is, this guy is speaking facts right now. This guy is speaking the exact words that fan was, fans were speaking. I, I have high hopes for this game. That was like day one. We're like, we're going to finish our twin stance. Mm -hmm. The air said that the team really used the twin blade stance as the jumping off point because they already knew the roles the single and double blade stances would play in combat. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to start by trying to make the twin blades feel mm. unique. And that's where we started to think, okay, let's make twin a little more technical. Yeah. Uh -huh. Still approachable, anybody pick up and play, but there's mm -hmm. a lot more um, yeah, So, so, so basically what he's saying is it's easy to, uh, it's easy to access, but not easy to master, which is actually what you want with everything really. It should be, and anyone should be able to access it, but to master it should require a high level of skill. Cool. That combat nuance comes in several forms. For one, I'm saying from a gameplay perspective, I'm not saying from a real life perspective. Keep that in mind, okay? You're a bit of a glass cannon. You take more damage, but mm -hmm. you attack faster and have a. Hold on, what? Forms. For one, you're a bit of a. Combat nuance to it. That combat nuance comes in several forms. Mm -hmm. For one, you're a bit of a glass cannon. You take more damage, but mm -hmm. you attack faster and have a wider array of unique combos. I see. Some of which require you to pause for a beat before continuing the combo. In addition to Makes that, sense. Twin Blade Stance is the only one where you're able to dodge or guard cancel out of the startup animations of an attack. Other stances oh. have you commit to your attacks very much like you would in a game like Dark Souls. Of once course. you press the attack... Well, uh, talking about... Um Talking about how this makes you more likely to take damage. To to See what happened here. Much like you would in a game. Of course, the the lightsaber went through his leg. Perfection. That that is that is some gaming perfection right there. But you know, I think I think people will forgive it. It's like, and uh, does it does it really matter? Is the point right? And like Dark Souls. And it went to a very uncomfortable place as well after his leg. Like leg is. Ooh. Anyways. Going on. Where once you press the attack button, mm -hmm. you have to wait until your attack animation finishes mm -hmm. before you can get out of the way. You can rely a little more on your reflexes and freely get out of the way when danger is incoming. Mm -hmm. Twin, we kind of let you ride the line between, you know, reckless and um, aggression. Yep. But you pay for it if you're making mistakes. Of course. Single blade stance is the all rounder stance of Jedi Survivor. Uh -huh. It's got medium range and medium power, and a jack of all trades approach to the skills that utilize it. It's uh -huh. relatively fast, so there's not the same amount of commitment to each attack compared to the slower stances. You can throw your lightsaber out for a mid range. Wait, attack. I thought, I thought, uh, hold on, I thought the double bladed stance was the faster one because you know you have two blades, so. Oh right, I think I think he's saying. Oh, okay, I, I'm such an idiot. Okay, so the double blade is the f uh, strong, slow one. The single blade is the middle one. 
and the double because i was like uh, because he said that you have to commit to attacks when you are doing the other two so I, so I thought one of them would be the slower one but okay that's that's also great perfection and its special ability is a strong thrusting attack that can be charged to deal heavy stamina damage to single enemies. Mm -hmm. Like in Fallen Order, the double-bladed stance is the go-to stance for crowd control. If yep. there's a large group of weak B1 droids crowding an area, it's never a bad idea to bring out that double blade and start dancing your way through the crowd. It's largely focused on close... Hold on. If there's a see. large group of... Order, the double blade that can be charged to deal heavy stamina damage to single enemies. Like in Fallen Order, the double bladed mm -hmm. stance is the go to. He did a double bladed throw. Damage to single enemies. Like in Fallen Order, the double bladed stance. So there are there are clearly different types of throws in this one. Like there was this charged throw which he did overhead. There was this. Uh, there's obviously the normal throw where you do it like this. There is this kind of throw when he he's holding two uh, two of them behind his back. Then there's this one where he's just throwing a double blade. Like, like in in Jedi Fallen Order, there were also like different kinds of throws. But like, uh, like when it was single, you just had this one, like the one when you're swishing it, right? And when it's double blade, uh, you just had the double bladed throw. And once you had uh, the twin blade, you could just like take it off and throw it. And which which was cool, I guess. But like. Uh, it would have been uh, like I I guess it it would have been better like if we had like choice between them. But what I am wondering is how are they gonna manage it because this thing has only limited buttons, right? And as much as I like to play on mouse uh, mouse and keyboard because this has more buttons in it, why wouldn't you? Uh, because uh, because you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a rant. For a controller, if you're if you're moving your camera. You have to do this, and if you want to press any of these buttons, you have to let go of the right thumbstick. That's shit. With a mouse, you can move the camera while right clicking. That's better. Fight me. <laughs> Anyways, my point is every game, uh, but the difference, the point is every game has to adhere to the controller scheme, and there are only a few buttons in this. How are they gonna, like, uh, how are they gonna make sure? that all of these stances have like and there is no like misinterpretation between them because when you have so much going on in a game the biggest problem is misinterpretation we'll see i guess we'll see this is the go-to stance for crowd hmm. control if there's a large group of weak b1 droids crowding an mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. it's never a bad idea to bring out that double blade mm -hmm. and start dancing your way through the crowd cool it's largely focused on close range damage spread out all around cow the downside is that there's a lot of startup time to its attacks. Oh, so this Making is the it slow a one. That you really need to be careful with when putting it to use against faster enemies. Huh. That, I guess, because Cal has to be more uh, careful with this one because it's, there's like two blades, he can cut himself or whatever. But like, that's clearly not an issue. Uh, but anyways, uh, on on all seriousness. I don't know, I thought that would be faster because there's two blades, so like, you know, like you can do this and you can do this. I don't know. But, let's see. There will be two brand new stances that you'll be able to wield in Jedi mm -hmm. Survivor. And while Respawn wanted to keep a lot of the cards relating to these two stances close to their chest, mm. we do know that one of them is called the cross guard stance. Of course. And utilizes a hilted lightsaber, much like the one that Kylo Ren uses. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. All <clears throat> the cross guard stance, and you. I was so excited, I coughed. I didn't realize this was the cross guard thing that he threw. I thought this was a single bladed throw. Okay, so now I see. So what changes is gonna bring to it? Like, I guess the the basic idea of a cross guard is that you can defend it like this, right? So like, if attacks come from here, and if attacks come from here, both of them can be like all of these attacks can be defended. So you're like four directional uh, defense. Okay. Utilizes a hilted lightsaber, much like the one that Kylo mm -hmm. Ren uses, and the other one is called the blaster stance, which is of a fighting course. style that incorporates both a lightsaber and a blaster. One hundred. Of the course. Describe the Thank you. stance as a high risk stance mm -hmm. that deals the most damage, uh -huh. but is also the slowest and has the least amount of range. So I I like the balancing. The player to feel really powerful. I like the balancing. But 
there's a huge I love risk, it. Probably more than twin, I would say, um, mm -hmm. to where you have to understand spacing. Because with that stance, we don't artificially push you towards an enemy. It's kind of like a mm -hmm. fighting game stance a little bit. So we wanted that stance to be a little uh, I, My question is, uh, for this kind of thing, I understand uh, that what, what they're saying. And the stance in itself is OK. My question is, uh, why does the cross guard? Why is the cross guard necessary? Like every time he was introducing a new stance, it made sense. You know, two blades fast, single blade a little middle of the way, double blade he has to be more careful. Um, so everything was intrinsic to the type of stance it was. Um, why was why are the two cross guards necessary for him to be more slow and more powerful? why uh, like i i guess i get the visual thing okay i get the visual thing but i'm saying uh is there something like intrinsic in the stance to the cross guard like something you can do only because these two things are outside like even with the la blaster stance like you have the blaster with you right so um anyways um <sighs> hmm i guess i'm thinking about it too well too much and also, uh, now that we, we see, since we haven't gotten to the blaster stance yet, when we do get to the blaster stance, uh, can he just use the blaster as it is, like just without the lightsaber? Let's see. I, I guess that would be free aiming, and the other one would be just uh, straight up shooting. Uh, okay, I, I, I just, I'm just curious. What does the cross guard do that makes him go, makes his attacks stronger? Like, does it is it aerodynamic? Is it uh, I don't know. Is it just simply um, gives it more like stability? I don't know. A little more, a little more mastery curve there. Because without all that, it just seems like yeah, it's just another stance, and they made a visual difference, um, which is fine. It's completely fine. But you know, I'm just, I'm just curious. That's all. Regards. And also this, this guy, like this Cal, Cal over here. The, the scars and all he looks like uh he looks like a buff nathan drake like a jedi nathan drake also what's on his wrist uh the thing that is it, it, it looks like the lightsaber is almost attached to his wrist it, it, this looks like a handcuff maybe would he go to jail at some time and, and like, the lightsaber is attached to his wrist see there's a wire going through it i don't know what that is interesting to the blaster stance, the team wanted something with more range, but also thought that a Jedi using a blaster would be a cool opportunity from a story standpoint as well. I know from a story standpoint, we thought it would be really something that reflects the journey mm -hmm. that Cal's going through to do something that's unconventional, okay. mm -hmm. something that's usually frowned upon for a Jedi. Yeah. And kind of putting him in, in this circumstance where he's doing whatever it takes mm -hmm. in the situation. He's a rogue at this point. And, he needs to do whatever uh, it takes. You know, the, that's something that I think through conversations, we were able to really make that work in regards to Oh, so they're not going to show the blast We stance. wanted something okay. that had more range. I understand if they're um, we working on it still. We wanted something that kind of had push and pull to it, where mm -hmm. like the way the blaster is designed, it encourages you to use your saber yeah. to, in order to like re replenish your ammunition on your gun. Like oh. I said, it's almost this rubber band that we're encouraging the player to so 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 it's kind of like it's kind of like the force meter but like when you like um use your blaster it replenishes your blast like even you use your lightsaber it replenishes your blaster meter my question first of all is there free aiming second of all how like with the force meter it makes sense because like when he's doing the lightsaber attacks, like maybe, I don't know, it's some Jedi thing. Okay. You don't have to think about it too much. Uh, and like also the thing is coming from like the force is coming from within. So when he does certain actions that can re recharge his force meter, like he can like, you know, recharge, of course, like in, in, in universe, it would mean like, like he's get, getting his ability to do force powers more like, right. Uh, but blasters, they run on battery packs. How is him doing attacks, charging his battery? Hold the fuck off. Is this the charger for his battery pack? Like, there's this, there's this cord going from it here to here. 
is is he using the lightsaber stances to charge this thing and that is going to like charge his back like it's it's a it's wireless but like who cares that would be interesting and then you like hit it on there to like recharge it or maybe it's just wireless i don't know that would be interesting really anyways let's uh <laughs> go back to the point where we were and something that had more range hmm. it encourages you to use hmm. your saber Hmm. To in order to like re replenish your ammunition and uh -huh. your gun, like I said, it's almost this rubber band that mm -hmm. we're encouraging the player to engage. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, sorry, I got, I got a call. Anyways, like I said, I have to go somewhere. Um, like I said, it's almost this rubber band that we're encouraging the player mm -hmm. to engage up close, mm -hmm. so that they can kind of make decisions when mm -hmm. they're far away as well. To be clear, this is still a melee combat game. You will uh -huh. be sniping stormtroopers from a distance with the blaster stance. Yeah. It's not a shooter, obviously, right? You're, it's like a melee gun, kind of, even though you're really shooting from long range, but there's a limit to it. Um, uh huh. Of course, of course. We always feed yeah, that in thoughtful combat and kind of how we still want so to. So that makes me think that free aiming is not going to be there. One of the most exciting aspects of these Which five is fine. Is that they all I would like it, though. Skill tree. Like, imagine if you had free aiming and you, like, hit a, like, not, instead of, like, uh, sniping enemies from far apart, like, like, like let's say you, you are, like, there's a chasm between and there's a control panel, like, and you have to hit it uh, with the blaster bolt to, like, uh, make the bridge come or, you know, bridge fall down or something. The, the, uh, like, yeah, you could, sure, you could hit, uh, like, you could hit the uh, links with your lightsaber, but, like, uh, maybe a blaster is more... Uh, I don't know. Precise is, is the word I'm looking for. I don't know if that's true. I guess like when you're throwing a lightsaber, you could guide it with your force, but like it's still a big blade, right? You don't want to like damage other things around it. Like if you, if you want more pointed damage. I don't know. I don't know. But you let me know in the comments. So each stance will have its own set of upgradable skills mm -hmm. to help you further develop it. Stances cool. aren't the only thing that have their own skill tree either. There's a tree for force powers mm -hmm. and one for survival skills mm -hmm. that offer flat increases to your health, force meter, yep. and more. It cool. all amounts to a combat system that offers a ton of flexibility in how yeah. you want to build up your own version of Cal Kestis. You can only equip two stances at a time, but you yep. can change them at every meditation point. Ah, I see. So I was like, <laughs> here I was thinking that you could change between these five stances at will. And I was going to ask, is there a stance changing attack like there was in uh, Jedi Fallen Order? Like, so like in Jedi Fallen Order, if you hold down the attack button, it uh, goes from single blade to double blade, where he does a down upward attack and then rotates his blade around and the double blade comes out. And, and for the other one, when he holds a double blade, he does this and then he rotates his blade around as the blade retracts and then does a... Uh, downward thrust so i guess that answers that i guess there's going to be a, a, a stand switch thing um but you'll have to do it with um you'll have to do it with uh two stances at a time see i I'll, I'll be honest i don't like uh this thing about slotting things in menus i honestly just think if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, make a type of weapon or a combat stance don't make me slot it in a menu like there used to be where where is the time of weapon wheels like there used to be a time for example in the early assassin's creeds uh, like you you had one of each weapon like you had a light sword you had a heavy sword you have a you had a heavy axe and you had a you had the throwing knives uh, like you had one of each weapon and then you could and you had the small knife one of each you could equip and then you could like uh, like switch it around for maybe like uh, change in damage output or and uh, like aesthetics and things like that that is fine like like I'm not saying that uh, in Jedi Fallen Order for example on Jedi Survivor for example like you could you should be able to change between colors mid, -bat mid battle or that you should be able to uh, change uh, like 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 if let's say if one blade is hotter than the other if you should be able to change that that's fine but when it comes to stances i think all should be like we shouldn't have to slot these things am i am i crazy here uh, like it, it takes you out of the game 
to be fair. And I get, again, the button limitations, which is why I'm so fucking angry that n not a single game is optimized for keyboards. Come to keyboard, you cowards. But anyways, um, because they ha it has more buttons. Uh, but anyways, I think I, I, I have said enough. And adjust your loadout for whatever the situation calls for. Yeah. It's exciting stuff, and I'll go into more detail about it when my full preview for Star Wars Jedi Survivor comes out later this month. Yeah, so I I, I got, forgot to complete my point. Like in the earlier, in the later Assassin's Creed, you had to like, you could just equip two weapons. Like you couldn't like, like you had different types of weapon. You had a spear, you had a sword, you had a, a axe, you had um like um like even like like those four things you couldn't equip like one spear one axe one uh sword uh and one shield like you couldn't do that uh, like you had to like uh equip either one axe and one uh, spear or one axe and one uh sword or something like that like you could switch between them at will but like it's a bit shit honestly i would rather prefer weapon wheels like yeah, there's still a bit of a menu, but like you can like you can quick switch, right? And like in them, like you, you could just like do like you could do the uh, the 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 Hogwarts Legacy thing where like if you hold down RT and then you place and you press any of the face buttons, uh, so then you could like uh, choose the weapon, and it's like that's very easy, right? But honestly, who cares? Uh, who listens to me? No one, apparently. Let's go ahead. Thanks for watching, and for more IGN first coverage of Star Wars Jedi Survivor, make sure to check out our gameplay clip from Kobo, along with a breakdown of some of the new enemies that you'll be. And also, in favor of keyboards, you don't have to hold down the attack button to do any of the phase button spells. You could just press the button directly. You know why? Because they are separate buttons. Anyways, I'm sorry. Fighting, and for everything else, keep it here on IGN. Of course. Okay, that's enough. Uh, I need to go, and so I'll not be reading any comments this time. Uh, but anyways, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, leave a comment down below with your thoughts. I had, I'm sure you have a lot of them. Uh, share this video with your friends and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, if uh, if you want to know more about me, then links to my socials shall be down in the descriptions, uh, along with a link to my website www.nightwalkergc.com. Recently, I wrote a post over there on Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania, uh, and what is uh, what I call the critic's fallacy. Uh, you will see. You have to read it, uh, and I think you can already guess what's my opinion on the movie. But yeah, go read it there. Uh, also, I am an author of a novel. Uh, it's called uh, uh, this, this is called Dreams of Affection. It's a dark fantasy science fiction novel. If that's your thing, check this out. Uh, it's also going to be on a New Delhi book, World Book Fair soon enough. So go there and buy a physical copy if you want to. But uh, anyways, uh, there is a short description of the story, like a short summary of the story, not uh, the end of the entire story, of course, like like a like a like a beginning of the story uh and uh, kind of like what's written in the back of the book but not really because that's that's different in this case but anyways there's uh, the, there's this description like down in the video description and below it all the links to buy the novel so if you want to like maybe check that out uh, uh that would be great um apart from that if the idea of a 22 year old uh, college student uh talking poorly about uh stuff like this which he has very little idea about and playing games uh, while making fun of them is uh, something that's appealing to you, uh, then please hit the subscribe button with the bell icon, all notifications turned on. And I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone.